federal government will next week commence the installation of 5 million solar home uh, systems worth 140 billion in an underserviced and off grid communities across the country. This is a uh, presidency source said is in continuation of the coordinated implementation of the economic sustainability plan across the country. Uh, the program will include the assembly and manufacturing of components of off-grid solutions to facilitate the growth of local manufacturing industry, while the use of local content will be incentivized for a conversation. We are now being joined by Hamad Salihijo, Managing Director of Rural Electrification Agency. The agency is saddled with the responsibility of overseeing the execution of this project. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. I want to talk a little bit more about this project, and I want to talk about the part that really caught my fancy was the infusion, as it were, of local content in all of this. I mean, how are you going to do that? And what percentage of local content is it going to take? You know, because some people, will, I think, as a matter of fact, that at this point in time, we should be able to even get those solar panels in Nigeria. We've got silica, sand, and the likes to make solar panels. But what, what part of this will local content will take? And I want to know about the knock-on jobs that will be created for people through this project. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that very uh, interesting question uh, and good morning everyone. Uh, so the whole idea of the uh, economic sustainability plan uh, is to ensure that um, locally uh, some of these uh, products are being produced. So if you look at uh, the trend now in the market, uh, what you find is that most of these products, uh, we only import them, you know, so all the products that we have from the panels uh, to, to everything, inverters, batteries are all being imported. But we all agree that uh, this is not a, a shift that we can have uh, immediately. Uh, so what this program is trying to do now is to encourage our local uh, producers to actually manufacture an assembly. So it's the assembly part. Uh, so even if they import parts of the uh, solar home systems, for instance, uh, they should be able to assemble them locally so that eventually by the time we build uh, more capacity and by the time we build uh, additional demand for these products, what you find is that uh, the local uh, uh, players would be able to uh, uh, sustain the market because uh, from what we can see, uh, having over 80,000, 80 million Nigerians without power, uh, we know that uh, uh, there is the demand for, for some of these products. So uh, essentially, uh, we are encouraging them to assemble locally first, uh, then we can move to manufacturing uh, shortly after that. Uh, to your point about um, also manufacturing these PVs locally, uh, this is also very possible. Uh, we do have uh, some government agencies like Naseni and a, uh, and a few other uh, private uh, sector players that are currently doing that. Uh, but honestly, uh, there isn't enough of it, uh, so we should uh, be able to uh, use this program uh, to be able to have uh, this um, uh, low interest loans to encourage uh, uh, private uh, local manufacturers. Well, Engineer uh, Sally Hijo, I would like you to give us uh, a more detailed yes. update of what uh, you know your agency has been able to do so far under the National Electrification Project. I know that uh, you have a mini grid in a Boeing State. Uh, you also have a hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, <laughs> uh, grid that, that has been set up in uh, Anambra State. And then uh, only recently in Ogun State, yes. uh, you took electricity to a village Absolutely. called Oloji that has not seen electricity for 200 Absolutely. years uh, in that axis. And then by next year, the plan is to cover up to 5 million homes, houses, communities across Nigeria. Now... What is the plan for maintenance? Because even if it is solar hybrid, you still need to maintain, right? And then second, how do you determine Absolutely. which community yeah. is next? And what is the distribution across uh, Nigeria? And then what is the cost for the average consumer? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Marija Doctor, for, for, for that question. Uh, so the Nigerian Electrification uh, Project is a, is a project uh, that is domiciled uh, within the REA. Uh, that Nigeria Electrification Project uh, is being currently supported by the uh, World Bank and the African Development Bank. However, the idea is that uh, the uh, NEP is supposed to um, help private sector investment in Nigeria. So we do have funds uh, of about 550 million uh, USD, where those funds are going to private sector players who come in 
uh, and are able to set up uh, their own power plants where they are being paid subsidies and grants around uh, the kind of power that they sell. So for instance, some of the projects that you mentioned are uh, taking a very, very similar, uh, similar uh, structure. So in essence, the private sector firm uh, is able to come in, uh, put down the plant, then go into agreements with the uh, community, uh, then the community is able to pay out uh, their electricity bills. You'll be very surprised uh, the local uh, communities are very, very uh, determined in pay paying their bills. So that way, uh, what the government has essentially done uh, is we've been able to use these funds to, uh, uh, to help uh, bring in additional private sector financing. Because if you look at the numbers that we have, and we say we're going to do that by ourselves through the budgetary allocation, uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, it's just not going to be possible. So how this now marries into uh, this uh, economic sustainability plan is that currently these uh, uh, subsidies are already being given to private sector firms. So if you, government is now bringing an additional 140 billion to help uh, in, 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 in debt, uh, in, in trying to uh, help these uh, uh, private sector firms, what you find is that they will be able to enjoy the subsidies from the Africa Development Bank and the World Bank, in addition to now the CBN funds that are coming, essentially meaning that all these um, uh, subsidies and grants are going towards uh, helping uh, uh, the local person. And we know that uh, uh, electricity is very, very important for, for our locals because, uh, as you've mentioned, some of those areas have been there uh, in the last couple of weeks, and uh, you can see the impact that uh, the electricity is making. Uh, so what you find is that uh, once you bring in uh, that sort of clean, reliable uh, electricity for them, uh, it begins to encourage them to go into a productive uh, use of this electricity. So most of them you find uh, are farmers, or some of them uh, you, you, you see that uh, the government it will also be rolling out programs around productive use so that it could now uh, be able to uh, help them get equipment that will help them uh, in maybe processing some of their farm produce. Uh, so you talked about uh, jobs as well. I think the whole part uh, of the economic sustainability, pl uh, sustainability plan for this particular program is, uh, is, is meant to bring about over 250,000 jobs, and uh, we've already seen that uh, happening. Thank you so much. What are your thoughts now on the energy emergency that we're facing? Because that's really what it is. You're proffering off-grid solutions, but how do we have mass solar power, clean energy, cheap energy, to the hundreds of millions of Nigerians that don't have it. Dr. Abati talks about this village in Ogun State in Ijebu East that hadn't had electricity for 200 years. There are numerous like that. What are your plans with regards to that? And how do you plan to raise funding? Because I've read that the estimate is something around $2.5 billion. Yes, you are, you, are, you are absolutely right. And I think uh, what we need to be very uh, cautious of now is that uh, we are able to uh, roll out, uh, uh, you know, uh, an universal access data uh, to uh, ensure that uh, we are finding out where these areas are that do not have electricity. I mean, uh, that community that we went to uh, in Ogun, uh, uh, you know, if you see the road that we had to follow uh, to get there, it was uh, about 100 kilometers of uh, uh, roads that uh, uh, you know were not uh, you know uh, extremely through the forest, you know. So to find those kind of areas, you know, you have to have a deliberate plan and have a, a, you know a universal access data, uh, so that you are able to uh, look for these uh, unserved and underserved areas. So the idea is that uh, you talked about. Uh, uh, the funding that is needed. This is exactly why uh, uh, the programs that we're rolling out now are programs that are supposed to attract private sector financing. Because if we continue to re rely on government, uh, we will not be able to cover that gap of 80 million Nigerians. So if there is a demand for it and, uh, uh, and the local community is willing to pay, what you find is that the private sector would be able to bring that money. Uh, and once they bring that money, they would be able to uh, invest that money in those communities. Uh, when I went uh, to some of these uh, areas, you find that the private uh, developers are at home uh, with, these, uh, with this local uh, 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 community. Uh, because they are going to be living there for the next uh, few years just to ensure that um, uh, they are able to recover the money that they've, uh, they've invested. So in addition, you know, we also have the uh, Rural Electrification Fund, uh, which is supposed to 
add to these subsidies that's, uh, that were given the private sector. So I think by the time we plug through all these uh, uh, funding mechanisms that we have, what you find is that uh, we are able to provide the electricity on one hand and at the same time uh, be able to uh, uh, cover the investment that is actually needed uh, in a public-private partnership setup. So, uh, I mean, those cities has a trick question, but I, I just uh, to be forewarned, uh, I'll talk about the grid system. A lot of people have complained bitterly about the grid system. Yesterday, yes. it shut down from about 11.25 throughout better part of yesterday, no light on the national grid. Uh, are we going to see it there where we'll have to scrap the national grid because of off-grid solutions like probably wind and uh, solar and some other off-grid solutions? Because... That's the way forward. It's cleaner energy. We still use big turbines, you know, uh, that you have water, you have coal. We don't have coal power plants, but you still use gas in some areas to be able to run. Mm. But uh, are we going to get to a point where we're going to shut down the grid totally and have these off-grid, midi pockets of grid here and there? And I want to also ask, are you doing anything with all on? Because I see all on, uh, by, you know, solar power in, in, in initiative by Shell. It's doing a lot of work as regards most of this uh, off-grid solutions in small villages. And uh, I also want to ask about payback. I know it's not for free, or is it for free, providing this power? Is it just going to be for free like that? So what's going to be the payback mechanism? No. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. So uh, I'm not sure uh, it's within my pay grade to speak about uh, scrapping the uh, uh, grade completely, you know. Uh, but, <laughs> but I understand uh, your point around uh, having these uh, pockets of off-grid uh, solutions that are able to complement the grid. Uh, so what we do at the REA is we ensure that uh, when we go to an area that is completely off-grid, the kind of technology that is currently being deployed, what you find is that it is ready for integration with the grid. And now, you know, even within this uh, economic sustainability plan program, what we have tried to do, of, of course, is to also bring in interconnected mini-grids. So you do have areas where you already have uh, uh, discourse, uh, but what you find is that if the, uh, if the power that the discos are uh, currently supplying is not enough for that area, we have partnerships with discos and the private developers where they come in and do uh, a, a small plant that complements what the disco is already uh, currently providing. So what you find is that they can jointly now manage uh, that particular uh, plant and are able to now share uh, on the profit. So this is an area where there is a very, very clear uh, partnership between the off-grid and the on-grid space because uh, uh, part of what I always keep on encouraging is that uh, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Both of them can actually coexist. Uh, as long as uh, you are able to uh, design the mini grids in such a way that once the grid comes in, uh, they are able to uh, uh, they are able to uh, interconnect uh, and be able to continue to provide power. So for us at the REA, we'll continue to cover those areas that are completely off grid. Uh, and I know that the federal government is doing uh, a lot uh, to 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 improve the on grid space. So whenever that uh, that comes into play, uh, the REA is always ready uh, uh, to. Uh, to, to connect to the, to the grids that come, that come from that. Uh, then secondly, I think you mentioned uh, about the pain. So yes, um, at the moment, uh, this, is, uh, this varies between communities and communities, and depending on what uh, their ability to pay is, uh, what you find is that within uh, the data that we are also, uh, uh, um, that we're also capturing, uh, we are looking at what economic activities those uh, uh, rural dwellers are actually having within those communities. So what you find is that uh, this actually does vary, but uh, uh, essentially uh, they, they are affordable, you know, uh, and what you find is that because uh, the rural dwellers, uh, as I said earlier, some of them even pay their bills more than the uh, persons that are living uh, in urban areas. So they do actually appreciate this and uh, they, they take ownership of it and they pay for the uh, uh, electricity. Uh, so you mentioned all on yes we do uh, a lot of work with all on uh, but not directly uh, all on provides funding uh, for some of uh, uh, the private developers that are currently benefiting uh, for uh, in the Nigerian electrification project. So Olon uh, provides them with, uh, uh, with private uh, investments uh, to, for them to be able to uh, deploy some of the infrastructure that they are uh, currently uh, uh, engaged with in the uh, Nigerian electrification project. So yes, Olon is, uh, is one of our, our partners. Well, uh, Engineer Salejo would uh, wrap up in just about two minutes. But very quickly, the tariff structure 
for these communities? You say it varies from one place to the other, but is there a framework in place, such as we have with the on-grid uh, system? And if there is a framework, what is the nature of that framework? And is there any relationship between uh, your agency and the uh, NERC, uh, that's the Electricity Regulatory Commission, or is REA that regulates uh, in this particular uh, case of off-grid uh, electricity, electrification? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for, for that, Doctor. So what you find is that uh, uh, the RE, uh, sorry, the NERC regulations uh, state that uh, anything uh, below one megawatt, uh, we are allowed to, uh, you know, have uh, direct uh, relationships with the uh, with the with the community. So, for instance, if uh, if today uh, you are putting up uh, 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 an inverter in your house, uh, you don't have to go to the NERC for any uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, licenses. Uh, so what you find is that, uh, you know, uh, some of these developers have been very, very creative with how uh, they, they develop these tariffs. So, of course, uh, for the REF, uh, for instance, we give them, uh, based on uh, the financial model that they present, uh, we give them a certain approval and say to them that, okay, look, uh, you are not able to uh, go beyond uh, uh, this particular tariff uh, given this uh, uh, particular community. Uh, but what, what, what you see the private developers doing nowadays uh, is they actually uh, do a multi-layered tariff where they actually charge them based on the usage that, uh, the, of the electricity. So for instance, uh, if you don't use much of the electricity and uh, you consume less, then you are being charged less of, uh, 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 of, of that electricity. So I, I find that that works uh, very well because uh, if uh, by the time those communities are encouraged to go for uh, energy saving devices, you know, what you see is that uh, their consumption becomes very, very low uh, and they are able to pay uh, uh, relatively lower, lower tariffs than they would uh, if they were uh, uh, consuming very, very high uh, 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 electricity. Well, thank you very much, uh, Engineer Ahmad Salihijo, uh, for your time and for spending some time with us this morning on The Morning Show. Thank you.